Everybody's ready to roll? Dave, you're first. Why don't you come on up and talk to us? Awesome. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hi, right. Dave. Does, does, do you know everybody, Dave? Oh, uh, pretty much do. Yeah. Okay. Just want to look at you. So I've got a uh, handout. If you want to take one and pass it down. I was at a conference one time and this guy was doing a, a presentation or a, doing a presentation and somebody opened my popcorn and he stopped and he says, Oh God, I love that sound. That's what he said. Can you talk? Hey, don't mind us, Dave. Tell us about that. Go ahead. All right, so uh, update on the spray park. Uh, so if you flip over to the first page there, uh, the project got started uh, late October of 2018. Uh, we had a crew from uh, Steinbach come up and uh, laid all the piping, all the basic electrical and the, uh, the concrete and some of the fixtures up uh, before, it, uh, before it froze. Luckily, we needed that to get our uh, $50,000 grant money because it had to be quote unquote completed. Uh, we're past that point now. Uh, which is good, so that checks in the mail for us. Um, page after that is going to be what the park looks like once it's completed. That's a question we get quite often. So there's the uh, concept drawing from uh, from the company. We have um, several different features. Some in-ground uh, uh, jets that spray. We've got a couple of uh, water guns uh, on the right-hand side there that uh, the kids can spray each other with. We've got little kiddie tables for uh, younger kids to play with. And we got some uh, buckets with uh, water on top that uh, the drop. So that's what it's going to look like. Hmm. After that, we got where's the spray spray park located, which is at the corner of Charlebois and Saint Antoine. Made a little bit of a legend. Uh, the red there is where the actual spray park is. I know one of the questions that had been brought up was parking. So in green, we can see that we have more than adequate parking. Uh, for what is going to be required uh, for the park. You think street parking will be a problem there? Like, would we have to do any control of that? You think? There's going to be people who want to park there. One side of St. Antoine, yeah. There's a third bit of parking there. Yeah, no, I was just curious, that's all. And I think you can park on Charlebois, <coughs> right? On the one side you of Charlebois. You can park on the one side of Charlebois. The side with the house is not the park side, but the other side, right? I thought it was the park side. Right oh, maybe it is. Park side yeah. here, I think. Is it? Oh, okay. yeah, I thought it was the park but side. Here and this side here. Okay. Yeah. Um, so from there, uh, just for, uh, for ourselves, the Paw families, um, what have we got left to do? we got some uh, funds to uh, finish and bring in just to kind of complete the park. Continue to write grants and fundraise, looking for some community sponsorship, and the rest of that is really upgrading Centennial Park. One of the uh, things that we ended up doing for putting the, the fixtures up in the location was we actually took down one of the slides that didn't meet code anymore, so we're just going to be getting rid of that particular slide. However, once the park's complete, um, the water it, itself and everything is turned on, we want to upgrade that park a little bit. There's not uh, much for benches or anything around there, and certainly people that uh, bring their kids to their kids, grandkids, so forth, uh, to the park, they're not going to want to get wet, so we want to make sure that uh, uh, it's inviting for them as well, whether we have some picnic tables and so forth. So that's going to be continuing on our agenda. Where are you sitting dollar wise? Uh, for what we got in the bank? No, for what you need to raise. What we need to raise? Um, I guess it all depends on what, what um, we're going to be talking to some groups about donating some, uh, some, some picnic tables and so, and so forth. Uh, see what we can get out of other groups. And then it'll be kind of left to see what we need to raise. I think um, for the park, we're, we're good. I just need to uh, maybe contacting Sam here right away. Uh, he's got to do the waterworks hookup for us. Town of the Paw is going to be uh, taking care of that. Um, uh, we're flipping the bill for that, just if anyone didn't know. Um, just instead of having, obviously, anyone else hook up the water, we're just getting to town to do the whole thing since you guys are going to be uh, taking care of the park after. That way you know where everything is. So some of the other questions that were raised were, what are the hours? 
of the park. And really that's, uh, um, that's up to the, for the town to decide. Uh, the idea of the park is um, to be used on the hotter days of, of the year. Now obviously we get some hot days at 10 o'clock in the morning in the year and you guys can choose to you know maybe start it at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, all the timers are all programmable so once uh, we give the keys so to speak to the town um, that's something that uh, we can get programmed in there um, for when the town wants to use it. Um, will there be a person in attendance when it's opened? No. Spray parks don't typically have anybody running the park. Um, the main controller is on a timer. When kids go to use a feature, they simply hit the button, enjoy the feature for 20-30 seconds, and it automatically shuts itself off. I know when talking with uh, um, with Sam, he was planning on getting it, uh, getting people to go by on a daily basis, or, and obviously on hotter days, maybe a few times during the day. Uh, we had talked about green team, whether or not that's who's going to be used, I guess remains to be seen, but um, we expect an influx at certain periods of the year or times of the day, uh, and obviously need to keep it, uh, keep it clean. Um, as far as uh, attendance as well, um, uh, there's no waiting pool, so there's no need uh, legally to have an attendant there. Uh, parks uh, everywhere else that we've seen, Winnipeg, uh, Dauphin, uh, there are no attendants that, uh, that monitor the park. Will it be fenced? Um, as of right now, fencing is not in our plan. Uh, do we have an issue against fencing? Not necessarily. Certainly this is a big investment that we're putting into the town and we like to keep it um, as beautiful for as long as we can. Uh, but currently fencing is not uh, on our agenda. Will there be washrooms or change rooms? Have you, just, uh, just a question, I mean, uh, like some of the spray parks I've seen, they're in a park and the park itself is, is fenced <coughs> in itself, mm -hmm. and then this one's kind of unique in the fact that it's, like it's an open area and it obviously looks aesthetically much better without a fence, like have you, have you ever gone to, because I know you guys checked out lots of spray parks where it's oh, yeah, for kind sure. of we like an open area, where, where the whole, the whole park itself has been fenced, okay. you know, and I think if, uh, you know, the town wanted to proceed in, uh, in, in doing the fence, uh, we would certainly be on board to help, uh, to help fundraise or get, uh, but have you uh, seen grants that? written, but have you seen ones where like exactly like the way it is right now in terms of no fence, it's kind of an open park, and, yeah. it's, and it's been fine, or? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, we were down in a couple in Winnipeg uh, at my, close to my niece's house, and uh, uh, no problems whatsoever. The whole park is just completely wide open. Uh, but I've also have seen some where the entire park itself is fenced in, and the spray park is just inside that particular park. Um, I know one talks with, uh, with uh, the town previously, uh, concerns of ATVs or snowmobiles going on to it, whether they could see it in the in the summer or the winter or not. Um, one of the types of fencing that were brought up were the uh, the poles that are in the ground and just f split far enough apart where people can easily walk through, but if you try to take a quad through, you're just not going to make it through the poles. Um, certainly something that can be discussed, you know, currently obviously right there, there is no fence other than the fence for the ball diamond. That's fencing off the ball diamond. I think our <clears throat> one of our concerns was uh, the uh, winter fencing for skidoos. Eh? For sure. Which could be addressed with uh, actual snow fencing too, snow I guess. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just draft the poles in in the fall. Because mm -hmm. we we don't want to just you know put this park up and, and walk away, right? I've got, they've given us cans of paint to, uh, to color match in case we do need to paint. I have those uh, in my heated garage with the rest of my paint and certainly as someone does uh, deface that, I, I'll definitely be there fixing, fixing that up. Um, next, as far as the, uh, the washrooms and change rooms, again, no washrooms, no change rooms. Part of that to do with uh, cost, cost from our standpoint, cost from the town of the Paw standpoint, having someone to monitor it again at these other parks. Um, kids typically dry off either they're within walking distance and they dry off on their way home uh, or typical parents will just wrap their kids in a towel, you know, maybe have something to eat or let them play in the other section because they don't want their kids just playing in the water section the whole time. Uh, let them burn off their energy that way. Does water being treated all the time? 
this water is not being treated all the time. Uh, one of the plans that we looked at was for recycling the water. Uh, if we did that, there would be uh, the need of a full-time attendant to monitor and test the water throughout the day. Um, this is um, water that goes um, uh, just down the drain, so to speak. But it's town water. It's town water. So it's actually treated. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's not recycled. But it's not recycled, treated, yeah. or not, yeah. you know, chlorinated. I think that's what you mean. Yeah, I was getting that. What happens to kids when they first get wet? <laughs> <laughs> They tend to wet themselves in different places and all of a sudden <coughs> you're recycling and then it's coming back on you. Oh yeah, absolutely. We wouldn't want that. Uh, and uh, last question, at least in my email here, was uh, if there's going to be a maintenance building. Um, again, no maintenance building planned for it. There's really no maintenance to do to the park uh, other than uh, cleaning up trash. Uh, there's turning the park on in the summer and shutting the park off in the fall. Uh, there is going to be a cabinet there with all the electronics in it okay. uh, yeah. that's that's all locked up that certainly if something needed to be needed to stay at the park whether it's some sort of supplies or garbage bags or something I'm sure we can find some room in that in that cabinet but uh, yeah no, no specific maintenance building for it are there are there pumps or are you just running off town pressure uh, there are pumps there's yeah. pumps and where would they be located they're in that cabinet yeah. as well in the cabinet, cabinet. Yeah. Uh, the cabinet is probably um, 36 by 36 by 36, give or take. Is uh, like the, I don't know how much you know about this, but like the, the turn on and turn off procedures, are they pretty simple or? They're pretty straightforward. Uh, when they do have it all hooked up, they will um, give us a, a, a session on how to, how to do it. Um, obviously, um, I'd like to take part in it, and obviously I'm sure there's going to be representatives from Town of Paul that are going to want to take part in it. Uh, and I did ask if we could videotape it, just in case there's turnover. It can be videotaped, so that is, uh, can stay in the archives about turning it on and turning it off. Cool. Um, and I believe there's a way to air bleed it, just to make sure that all the water is out of the lines before it's closed off in awesome. the fall. Good. We're not the first one. So. Um, mm. Are you anticipating any signage at all? Uh, absolutely, we will be putting up um, a sign. Uh, we're still looking at uh, what kind of signs. I can't tell you exactly how big, but absolutely there will be a sign with uh, all our big contributors, uh, Destination Marketing, uh, Twin Motors, uh, so on and so forth. Everyone that's contributed together in this big grant from West Oval last year, we weren't expecting either. And then that one sign will have the rules kind of thing on it too, right? Like just not ten signs there, just one. Yeah, I don't want, yeah, I certainly don't want to put signs everywhere that they become, uh, um, you know, just fall into the background kind of thing. But I figured the rules, the best place for the rules is probably going to be on the cabinet. Um, whether we put one on each side of the cabinet that's already there. Uh, Dave, I'm sorry, I'm not up to speed on some of the some of the stuff. The uh, the equipment itself, what's the projected lifespan of it? Um, depends on the particular um, pieces of equipment, but we're ranging anywhere from 15 to 25 years. 15 to 25. And uh, when they uh, commission it, the town staff will be there to learn whatever needs to be learned, I'm guessing? Yes. Yeah. I'll definitely be in touch with, uh, with the town once that, once that date comes. We haven't set a date for the other uh, contractors to come back and finish everything off, but uh, obviously we're waiting for the snow to finally go away. And That's what I was going to ask, Dave. Do you have an actual schedule when things are supposed to get? No, right now we don't. Um, uh, the contractor wants the rest of their money, and uh, we want to give them the rest of their money, so we want to get this done as soon as we can. Um, if we can get them here in uh, May, June, is kind of what we talked about last year. We want to have it ready to go before we want to turn it on, obviously. And at the same time, they want to get it done as soon as possible so they can get paid the remainder of their money. Cool. Any other questions for Dave? No? Good. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, it looks good already. Yeah, it looks really good already. Well, it's been a long road, but uh, can't wait to turn it on the summer. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Planning to have a barbecue and a DJ. Uh, awesome. I don't know if a barbecue, I think Domino's wants to step in and sponsor some pizza, but we're going to have a uh, bit of a, a party there when we do turn it on. So 
Cool. Well, thank you, folks, sir. All, All right. right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. What's up? Okay. So let's, uh, let's deal with it. Um, just one last thing before we close on this. There was a resolution passed by previous council, and it's basically saying that they're going to commit, to, like the uh, families building a better community, will commit to a $25,000 reserve fund for their operating in the Spray Park, and that council agree to the operation and maintenance of the facility with the funds used to operate the Spray Park to come from community enhancement fund. So I just wanted you to be aware that there was approval on this. Check for us, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no bounce. Yeah, no checks. No, just uh, I got some copies of those emails I sent Randy there in case to refer, refer to if there's any questions. And yeah. I also got a uh, response back from Bruce regarding the questions you guys left on that meeting I could make about Perfect. the uh, how the police is filled and stuff. And it was about full time employees. So I don't know if you just want to make a copy of this and hand it out, or you want me to read it? Or? I can do that, actually. Okay. I got it a few days ago, and I thought I'd just save it for the meeting, no. so, rather than emailing it, so. Yeah. How are things going? Pretty good. Slow down a little bit. Good. Yeah, I need to breathe. Good thing. Yeah, a little bit. But that doesn't mean it's uh, going it like bad. that. It's just catching up with paperwork and stuff like that. March Madness is over, so that's when you... Uh, <laughs> Budget and resources and uh, assessments for all this are due, so I don't know why they cram it in one month. I don't know why we can't space it. It's not my decision. So. Which here you're here in two right? March? Yeah, we're April one day April one, yeah. But it's That's just I don't really get the I get the budget part has to go there, but the assessments I don't know why we don't move them to October, November, have them every month at that or year at that time rather than putting everything in March. Mm -hmm. You can still as long as you're assessing for a year, I don't see where it matters where it is. That's kind of my take. Yeah. They don't listen to me. Well, work hard. Work hard. And yeah. <laughs> and then make make that decision. Turn it around. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a, that's always that's a avenue, I guess. Direction to go. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't make that um, meeting in town. That was the one day I was traveling for hockey. So would have liked to have been there. Thanks. My understanding is Kevin answered a lot of the questions. Yeah, he's pretty, uh, he knows it all. he's been around well, yeah. less than me actually in the outfit, but he's uh, climbed up real fast and he's learned a lot about the upper management, and financing and billing and all that stuff sooner than myself. I don't think we were the first ones to think of the questions yeah. that we came no, with, you know what not. I mean? Like probably it's, not. I think it's, you know, everybody's asking the same yeah. questions, right? Because it's a huge part of everybody's budget. Yeah. And, they had answers for pretty much all of it. So yeah, no, yeah. I totally agree there. And even like the prior transfer in here, a lot of the questions were about that. The same stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I get it. Yeah. Cool. So this note that you've given us, Brent, is. That's right. This note here yeah. is about. The full time employees, I think it's bolded there. How does the increase, decrease of full time employees affect the rent per square meter that is billed to the town of the Paw? Okay. So the answer just starts at, a, at above there. I don't know, that's just what he sent. So no, no matter how many uh, full-time employees you have, our rent is still the same. That, that's what I read out of this, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so we're always paying the same rent no matter if we if you're three short or no short or whatever, right? Yeah, because it always goes by that paper, right? But if you get more people in on paper, because I think... Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong here, but when the bonus was when they put more traffic members in there, the rent went down, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know if that's changed from reading this. Depends how you interpret it, I guess, but well the traffic the numbers. Fees. I think it's because the traffic numbers were provincial. 
Yeah. And we pay for municipal. I think that's where the okay, difference. So, yeah, so, so when we bring in more provincial, yeah. it should lessen our cost. Yes. And yes. actually, at the last meeting, um, okay, good point. Yeah. based on the information you presented, we're going to be asking for another provincial member yeah. to offset all these other provincial costs that you're spending on um, the staff, the Mental Health Act, the Child Family Service. Mm -hmm. Those are all provincial mm -hmm. bodies. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Is there any impact with those animals? Well, have you guys, you guys have heard that news? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. So that's they're going full blast with that, and they figure six month turnaround. Really? Yeah, they're they're talking big, big change, like fast. And I don't want to be the pessimist here, but I've never seen it happen that quick. No. Nope. There's, I think there's just so much more there that there's, they just think it's just bodies in, bodies out, and it doesn't work that way. It doesn't. So there's so. vehicles. There's IT equipment. There's there's uh, scheduling, there's oversight, there's uh, bound, like I know it's First Nation, but there's still boundaries, there's an MOU that would have to be done with myself in the paw with oversight on that from like Kevin. Because it's just policing, right? When they're short, who do they call for backup? Guess, who, guess who's going across the bridge? Well, so, so that's my, well, some of my questions relate to that. Yeah. So is the plan right now that the RCMP is going to be completely out of the LCMP? Yeah, because yeah, they get the call who polices them, right? I mean, I think the Manitoba, I think uh, Justice of Manitoba has a say and can probably uh, say no to it, but I don't know if that's a fight they want to do. They want to give them their voice, just like the community. If you wanted to explore another police service, you'd have that right. So I don't, I don't foresee them, and this is just a prediction, I don't foresee them stopping it from happening or trying to stop it from happening. I think it's going to go ahead with that FM. I call them DOPS, but it's Manitoba First Nation Police Service. So from a semantic yep. sort of perspective, so I, there's six or eight members over there? There's seven. There's seven? Yeah. So they will be gone from the region? Well, I think, I, I don't know, it hasn't been actually mapped out, but I think how this is going to play out is once those people, when the date starts, those people will be called effective members. They'll probably just come over here. The payment to them will, of course, be touched by the town. It'll be... Right. Probably the province will pick it up until those members are a transferred because they have to give them their check mark that they're completed their four years there because it's not their fault that they're getting pushed out. Right. Or they'll give them the option: Do you want to finish your four years here and work in the pot under provincial money? <coughs> so you might get bonus bodies without paying for them for short term. And so um, might so the, so things move along. They're yeah. no longer here. Right. Eventually, that was just the town detachment. Yep. Yeah. Releasing just DRM in the town. And what happens if you get a call to us? Yeah. Like, they, it wouldn't come through us. The only way it would come to us is if they're requesting, we need help now. And we, we need you. Do we charge them for that? Uh, no, the overtime is strictly from what I've seen it, because there's, no, uh, there's no budget between police services. There's no transfer of money between a Winnipeg Police Service, the RCMP, and DOPS. So, so, so I know, that's what... We had this We had this in... I went through this when I was in Roblin, because we had Roblin, Russell... Rossburn and we had Wavis Capo. When I was there, Wavis Capo disbanded from the RCMP, went DOPS. I believe they're still DOPS. Yeah. Now, when they needed backup now, it's not a question of, well, we can't go because who's going to pay? We just go, you, you do it, you get through the situation. And then it, it happened more often than the staff sergeant wanted it to. And it, it ended up being like he knew this, but X dollars were out of his budget because there's no transfer to build them back. It and it works the same the other way, though. Yeah, like it but would be unfortunate I agree. If, if the taxpayers of the town of the Paw have I mean, to start subsidizing that. I, I, I agree. I, I don't know if that's how the actual answer is. I've seen it that way. Maybe things have changed where there is there is a way that it is billed back and paid back now. But I know when, like, uh, I'll say 14 or 15, it wasn't working that way. So it would be the same for the whole province. Correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, but I know right now RCMP you guys can switch back and forth. Mm -hmm. but if they're no longer RCMP, they have zero authority on our side. Is that correct? They, or don't, is have, incorrect? they don't have primary authority. The, the a police officer has has 24/7 authority in Manitoba. Mm -hmm. They're sworn yeah. by the province for for them, but for us, we're sworn by the federal government. So we have authority anywhere in Canada. So we don't go on other places to primarily. Hey, we're taking over here. We won't do that. But if no one's around and we encounter something and we have to act on it, we can. And they, but they, have they can't no, do that no. here. They, they can't come here to enforce stuff, but if they're here at McDonald's and getting a coffee and there's no RCP around, the guy needs to be arrested, they can arrest them. Okay. okay. Well, so yeah, there's there's some things a citizen arrest too, right? There's still police officers. officers. Yeah, there's still a police officer. So you could call them for backup as well? Right? Yes, for sure. Okay. For but sure. In, uh, in terms of like, 
I was just looking at the legalities. So you yeah. know, let's just say you get a call over there, yeah. and there's the guy in charge. Yeah. But uh, I don't, I don't think we're we're going with this plan here. Of B, I don't feel comfortable. No, guys, we're going. We're doing this. This is what we're doing right now. Yeah. And something happens. Yeah. And they were in, like, and you guys don't. I mean, obviously the training would be maybe different. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have more. You guys have more experience. Maybe not. I'm not saying. No. I'm I just. I, yeah. I just. How do you? Well, I don't know to get into that. But at the end of the day, if they called us for assistance, we helped them, and they would run the show as to right. how it's going to operate. So it'd be like, no, we don't need you anymore. Could you stick around and help us? But legality parts and stuff, I, I think, I think we're both covered no matter what we do. Yeah. By these small police officers in that And and they, they still they'll still be under the, uh, the inspection thing by the uh, board, right? Like yeah, they have an exa uh, civilian over executive yeah. committee or whatever they're yeah. called. It's some elders and some some counselors and chiefs and it's a board that sits in that. Should should we be in touch with OCM to negotiate some kind of a agreement on shared services? Um, I, I think now would probably be a little early, but I think down down the line when we start talking, like when this will all come out that when it final, like Kevin Lewis is coming down next weekend or next week, sorry, weekend, and uh, him, myself, Kevin, and the sergeants. Stacy Weens and OCN are going to go meet with Christian and talk about just, just we want to get more why they're leading that way, why they're doing you know certain things. Uh, if we failed them, like what what is it? Like just get an answer and all that, and then the next question will be like, okay, why? How do you think it's going to happen this fast? We'd like to hear this because we're not trying to doubt you here, but that's quick. Yeah. Maybe it is possible. Maybe there's there's new uh, new ways of doing this so quick, and then it'll be like, okay, so when this transitions. We need to put a working agreement in place, and we need input from yourselves, most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. So I don't know if that becomes a, you know, everyone's in the room at one time, and we kind of say our thing or what. Or, but Kevin will, Kevin will kind of guide me through. This is what we need to do. Reach to the town, and let's set this up. So who owns the building? Over there, is this that still stands? Well, it's owned by the, it's owned by the federal government. government. The federal government owns it, just like any First right. Nation, right? So. I think OCN owns the detachment. So yeah, they, said they, they said they had just paid yeah. it off. Yeah. So, so who, who would be the, the best <coughs> group to contact in terms of figuring out if across Canada this tops, if, the, if there are shared agreements with any other? Um, or was it the RCP? Wait, 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 call call I would say if you probably call CAPS, like CAPS in in, uh, in Winnipeg, probably Scott McMurchie. Uh, I think a few people know who mm -hmm. Scott McMurchie is yeah. from here. See. He's the uh, he's a superintendent. Uh, he was in caps, and yeah, he would have, he would have a lot of know on this stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm all about dual support. Oh, for sure. If uh, you know, it's different than a fire. I mean, a, yeah. a big fire happens. How often, right? You go, but I mean, yep. could have significant on yeah. other on other side. Yeah, uh, a few incidents happen where you're like, how yeah. do you? Oh, I hear you. So, like right now, your mechanism is if. If Count of the Paw, RCMP are doing work on OCN, it's billed back to OCN or RCMP? Like right now, how is that working? If it's overtime. If it's overtime, yeah. it's being billed, but if it's just regular time. Straight time, but it works both ways. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, no. And sure. we get the better draw on this side for that agreement right now. Do we? Oh, okay. without doubt. Without doubt. Okay. Well, it would be threefold. Really? But the OCN members, although there's less, would do way more work for the PAW than the PAW would do for OCN. Well, threefold. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. Well, no, it's just, well, it's good to know. Yeah. There's way, way more calls on the town side than there is on the reserve. Okay. Yeah. I would say it's three to one, even higher. Really? Yeah. Well, and that's not changing in six months. It's probably not. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's been there since two years I've been here, and I get that from even talking to Dave Mancini. It's been that way for a long year. Yeah. yeah. So... That you can take a month where it might flip, but on average, yeah, for year, sure. But yeah, if you yeah. average out a year, that's right. year over year. Yeah. Well, so if there's no mechanism for building that back, it works again both ways, yeah. right? Yeah. So what? I've, I've but, been in, but in sheer, just to like, that's a good point. But in sheer, like who's going to be backing up each other more? I would say we're probably going to be over there more because they only start with ten. And when they're working, they're never 10 around because there's, yeah. there's holidays, there's training. So you can take that 10 and probably shrink it to six, five, seven, five, six, really? that much? Yeah. yeah, and then they have a night and they have a day shift in that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas you take us, we'll be sitting with, we'll lose the sitting count. Well, 
if those seven stick around, we could we, we could be working with twenty some. Yeah. Sure it's a, a lot of bodies. Yeah. And okay, now I know you shrink it down, but when you have the people that are probably in the community, it's probably always going to be about 10, 12. Wow. So if something happens, if we're going to have, you know, more bodies to go there to help. Yeah. And cover our own is what I'm saying. I know there's more calls here, but we should have more bodies to cover our own. So they need should have some meeting us to, but to call us. Yeah. 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 So you've been through. Have you? You've been through this process in another community. Yeah. yeah what, through the switchover. Yeah. You have. Yeah. So what was the turnaround time? I it wasn't it, six months. Well, but I, think, I think it was a year and a half. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then what had happened is when it came to the date that they put in question, and they had the chief of police, their inspector. We had our staff sergeant, our inspector from the district, which was Dauphin then, and we all sat at a table and they discussed like. The, the, the IT equipment, the RCMP said that that had to be pulled out, that release there, so you have to put all yours in. Uh, the staff, like, there's a girl, a lady that works over there, I don't know if she's going to keep her job, if they're going to take her or what. I would think they would be not foolish not to if she's trained, it's the same computer system, knows the community and such. Yeah. So they got to get through that. And the biggest the biggest transfer there is, the, is actually the file work that we do. So these some of those files that you're still carrying are six to eight, nine months old. Now yeah. You just turn them over and say, here you go. And they go, well, we don't know what's going on here. Yeah. So nine times out of ten, and how we worked over there is that the RCMP just on this day, day and time did not respond to any more calls over there, but they continued working on what they had until okay. it was officially, officially done. Yeah. And it avoided a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. For sure. And then there's other, you know, there's other decisions too. Like there's contracts with janitors, guards, matrons. Like it's just, there's a lot things. of stuff yeah. to go through, right? A lot of the administrative yeah. stuff is yeah. probably... Yeah. Okay. So if, um, if you right now you're sharing services, if you need help, they come over and help. Right? Yeah. And they're valuable, and, and you use them. Yeah. So how will you handle it if you no longer have them? Well, how will that work? Like sorry. So let's say if the DOB or whatever they tops, are, yeah. Yeah. They yeah. Um, they don't come to this side of okay. the anymore. Yeah. But we, we retain don't have that support. But we then we'll retain the members that we have from there. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So if how you didn't, you them, okay. You didn't. Yeah. If you didn't, like, okay. I, I don't know how many members we have right now. Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. Well, we're actually seventeen because 17. we have two extra. Yeah. So are you are you going to be in a position where you need twenty one? No, I wouldn't think so. No. 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 You'll be okay. I think so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think right now for like we're we're. Uh, I mean, we always need more members. I'm not. I would never say mm -hmm. to someone and said, "Hey, you want to put two more members in the pot?" I'd say, "Definitely." I mean, I'm not the one that the council. I mean, town council pays for you know it's money there, but for me, it's policing. It's a body. I'll take all the help I can get. But uh, I, I don't foresee the change directly making us need any more because we work with the same numbers, right? And OCN is OCN, and we have ours, and we get by on our side with helping from them and vice versa. <coughs> Minus them and minus the work on their side, kind of equates to what yeah. we can run for part in the paw. I'm going to miss something, Brent. So, yeah. the more members we have, we don't pay anymore, right? No, well, once you're municipal, like once they're gone, you're full in the municipality, right? Like we have position numbers designated for rural municipal. We keep the municipal full so that we, what you guys pay for, you have those officers. So, what does this mean? That I don't, I don't, we don't both. We don't put full time equivalents to determine rent. Oh, just for the rent? That's yeah. right. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So, would it be worth our while to be sending a letter shortly saying we understand there's going to be members that are provincial members or whatever, or federal members, federal. that will have to put their time in here and that we would like them that without having to pay for them? But just keep in mind that it, this decision will solely be on the member. Yeah. That member mm -hmm. will come, they'll talk to staffing, and the member will say, like, you know what, I came up here for a four-year limited duration, it was a five, it's changed to four, yeah. a four-year limited duration post. I fulfilled it because I had nowhere else to go. They can't make them go in the paw to fulfill it because they just checked, I want to see and that's where I went. So they have to allow them to check mark, you've done your four, even though some of them might have only done eight months or three really? years. <laughs> yeah, You're, you get that check mark because it's, it's not their fault. It's not their fault, but right. it's done. That, that's right. Yeah. So uh, most of those members, though, I know, like obviously I know them and they're, you know, married or have a spouse or a better half in the community that have jobs, and yeah. I know they like it here, so I think they want to ride out the four years. So it probably so. wouldn't hurt them to throw yeah, out no, here saying we never hurts. Yes, we'd be yeah. more than happy if we're not paying yeah. for it to host them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like as it sits here, and technically that should reduce our rent, shouldn't it? Well, it, 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 it may short term. Yeah, we're yeah. in the building. 
Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's it. By all our members, by the way, our members is the good part. By the way, it uh, kind of explained it should. Yeah. I can't obviously say it would for sure. No, no, but I'm yeah. just saying. Oh. Yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to. And then you should see, you know, a little more presence on the streets. Mm -hmm. and yeah, around yeah. for a while anyway. That would be beneficial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt, Randy. I agree. Interesting. Yeah. Um, we. Met with the residents on uh, Traeger and uh, Cudmore mm -hmm. uh, about the walking path situation. Right. They um, they continually express frustrations. Yeah. Uh, if if you guys are out and about, if you could sure. keep an extra eye open around that part now that after the snow goes, it'll start okay. again. Yeah. Traeger and Cudmore. Yeah. Yeah. Go. I know we were talking Go about that last course. time. Yeah. 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 Okay. Anything else? Anybody got any other questions? Anything else? Right. Um, well, I'll just tell you too. Like, so I, I mentioned that we were two cadets up like, on paper, so we're two on paper working. Uh, we have three more cadets coming in, so it's good. Uh, I thought that that would save the town money, seeing them that they're at a lower salary, but they're not. I guess I was told by Kevin there that you pay for a member on an average per. It doesn't matter what. They make or yeah, it's that up there. Thing, right? yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was wrong there. I thought, oh, I got some good news for you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, so we have uh, two members, the Harrises, that are on the way out. It sounds like they've sold their house now. Uh, is the word today? And uh, we're losing an OCN member, and we're losing a uh, another member of the pod. So we're gonna have four going out, and two up. So we're looking good. Three coming in. So we're actually a little bit ahead on the staffing. Which I like. Yeah. Yes. I know some of those young guys are making more of a presence uptown too, in the okay. back lanes and whatnot. Okay. I'm seeing a, a bit of a difference recently in the amount of the street people in the back lanes and on the front street bothering people. Okay. So that's a good thing. Okay. They're like they're approaching and talking to them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They are. Yeah, well, that's good to hear. I usually, when I know, I know my rule is kind of when I'm in the office, I usually go around the bullpen and if the guys are sitting there and if they're working, doing their thing, I'm like, let's go quick and let's go for a patrol. And we're trying to push on the, the shift exchange to, to get these people picked up mm -hmm. earlier. Well, because we're going to get a call about them anyway. Yep. And if it saves us from, you know, uh, doing it later on a busy night from just dealing with them, we can do other things and we can try to put them in jail for the night. Because I hate to say it, but nine times a time you get called and you're doing it anyway. So. No, I spoke with the one officer that I bumped into and he was explaining a few of those things to me and then he said I'd rather be out here making a difference than sitting behind yeah. on the computer. Yeah. So well, I'd much rather be in a vehicle well, taking yeah. care of this. And that, that goes for all of us, but it's like you're always drawing oh, yeah. the computer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ever since he's kind of you know, says one thing and does the other there, they want to say push the guys to get out, but then they make all this other stuff that makes you sit in your chair. So. Yeah. Anyway. Higher grade. Yeah, it's higher grade, right? Yeah. See the couple yeah. members yeah. walking through downtown. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. It's, it's nice to yeah. see. It's good to see. Good. It, it's good yeah. to see. And it'd be nice to see more of that. Like, I don't okay. know how much you can push that. Like, I, I understand. But, I can you know, it's a, it's a yeah. big thing yeah. to see. You know, especially if you're picking your spots, right? Yeah. Like, if you're picking the the days of the week or the times of the month or the hours of the day that, that they're out there, right? But, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, thanks. Yeah. No, it's good to see. Great. Thank you for coming. Okay. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, all. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We'll see you. Mm, public works. Uh, we had invited uh, Mr. Hocus to attend, but I, he couldn't make it this evening. No. Um, give me one sec. I don't know if I put it in here. Um, Mr. Hocus is wanting to meet in camera, but I don't see how it falls under any of our in-camera guidelines um, to discuss. He said that it would, I'm, I was very specific to the discussion on parking, and he said that it would be very specific to his business, and he preferred to have an in-camera session. So I just wanted to put that out there. But again, that doesn't fall under part of our in-camera. This is very specific to parking. Okay. Okay. So the the guidelines for in camera discussions are typically staffing issues and negotiations. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think a parking bylaw discussion really falls under that category. Um, we can. I, I know he's a fairly busy fellow too. Uh, if he can't 
make this evening, maybe we could ask him when he could come. Sure. Um, keeping in mind that we'd like to move forward with this in one way or another before too long, but um, let's let's give him one more count. one more shot. Everybody good with that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. The, Sorry. I guess the, the other thing is, is that can you come in and just talk to you or talk to? You? I'm not. I'm just saying. I'm, I had asked for the information, and then the last time I came up, it was come to council because I didn't receive it at that point yet. Okay, uh, 3.2, fire safety. This was kind of disappointing. Some time back, I was waiting for Office of the Fire Commissioner. They had had quite a few changes um, in their um, managers and stuff also. But this came as a result of any kind of protection that people in town would have if they're renting single-family dwellings. I contacted Landlord Tenants Branch. They don't have any, any authority or any protection for tenants um, as it relates to fire safety. I also talked to OFC and they said the other issue is again as a municipality they said great on the town of the paw for wanting to initiate or instigate something like this. However at the end of the day we have no authority to enter their home unless we are given permission. So we can't just go that looks like a, a bad looking home we want to go inspect it. We can't do that. However I don't see what would be wrong with us um, establishing a program which leaves that open, like it might even be during fire safety week, saying, do you want an inspection of your home or your property, or your rental property, that would enable us to come in and provide with uh, our, our leadership and letting you know what you're required for fire safety in your home? Well, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, <clears throat> I think that's a good idea too, because I actually, there was a place I visited that was a rental that was for sale, and I thought it was of like a, a major health concern, so I called, and they said it doesn't matter if I call or not, the renter has to call. But the renter wasn't going to call because then they felt that the rent was going to be upped, yeah. and they and didn't want to get kicked out. So it was, but I thought it was the parole and conditions. But anyway, as long as we're yeah. invited in by either yeah. the landlord or the tenant, we have the right to go in the home if they invite us in. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think it would wouldn't be a bad idea to just come up with a little bit of a program, yeah. put it out there. At least we're doing something. I think similar. Yeah, like I thought that the uh, fire alarm thing was yeah. cool that yeah. they did. When they were going around it's, that. it's yeah. very disappointing to see this because anything in the act over 10 dwellings or 10 units mm -hmm. is a requirement to be inspected but anything under that isn't and it is really disappointing that there is no one out there looking out for that one person that is yeah. renting a home right you said the tenant can invite in it yes. doesn't have to be the landlord correct okay. <coughs> correct and most of the like most of the apartment buildings are welcoming us in there because it puts a protection on them too. It's going, we had our building inspected. If something goes wrong, this was our last inspection. So it's a safety net for not only your tenants, but also for the landlord. It probably happened somewhere in their insurance, I would think, too, eh? Right? I'd imagine. Showing that they did due diligence on their building or whatever. <coughs> so, in saying that, can I direct? Yeah. Yeah, I, I Someone think, come it's, up with a program I think it's a good idea on the fire yeah. prevention to do yeah. that. It's, it's unfortunate. Very, very surprising. Uh, AMM resolution for district meeting. So I would like this, we had talked about it at the table. I have gone through the Saskatchewan Act and I've also gone through the Manitoba Act. The Saskatchewan Act is very, very clear on the liability of um, immunity from liability for firefighter volunteer and the municipality so I'm requesting that we put in a letter or a resolution into the AMM that would say that we make changes to legislation to include the same wording as this um, we have a tiny little paragraph this is or it's Saskatchewan yeah and it's very detailed and very good there is no room for question mm -hmm. so we would require a resolution to take to the June district meeting so that it gets on the table for November awesome yeah, this, I think we should do it. Yeah, this is further yeah. to the situation we find ourselves in right now. Right. And when I was at AMM, we spoke to several mayors and Reeves, and we have a lot of support across the province right now. So now would be a good time to move this issue forward and hopefully prevent this from happening again someday. Yeah. Get some momentum. Okay. Uh, payroll and accounts. 
So we would require a resolution for pay period number seven in the amount of 102,632.25, general checks in the amount of 164,958.94, and AFTs in the amount of 110,635.34, for a total of 378,226.53. We'll also need a resolution for check in conflict in the amount of 2,677.07. Um, in saying that, some of our bigger bills are Morgan Fuels for Jet A for the airport, 17383 Trading Company, that was our town fuel in the amount of 12920 Tax service, it was almost $15,000. These are for tax sale fees, so that's, that's recouped through the tax sale itself. Vipon for our alarm annual check was 7940 and Stitco would have been one of our last bigger billings for the amount of 70951 for all our for paying for facilities. <coughs> the check register is um, attached. Did mm -hmm. everybody get a chance to have a peek at it? If you have any questions? It, the detailed check report is there, but the, uh, the check register is in there. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, they've got the detailed check report, but not the, the normal check register we get. That's just got the listing of the check. That's just, uh, it's, it's just yeah. yeah, that one. Oh my God! Never mind. This one's on here. Yeah, it's on there. <laughs> it's at the bottom of the uh, disbursement report. Oh my gosh! No Quit worries. changing things. <laughs> it's okay, Chuck. <laughs> we know you're tired. Today. Yeah, no, I'm okay. too. No, that's a good start here. That um, so Jared our cousins didn't we say we were done paying? It might have been just a last because not, we haven't even received a report yet. Oh wait, JR, hang on. I just thought, I mean, I was going through this. That's the only thing that I kind of... Yeah, because I thought the last time there was a JR Cousins check and that was the last holdback. Yeah, that's what I thought too. This, yeah. this could be the holdback from the Lagoon report the hold though. The holdback for the holdback? <laughs> the, the double holdback. Hold 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 double holdback. No, I thought when we talked about it, they said that was it we were all yeah. done with. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm sure it's legit, but. Couldn't sound like you're sure. Well, let's do that. Yeah. I don't even know what check number it is. What check number is it? No, it's on that uh, EFT check. Oh, okay. Under J or JR. <laughs> <laughs> I don't find it. What's the letter before? Yeah. J. Five. R. C. Zero zero zero. I can get you an answer. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's. I don't know why I can't find it. It's on the check register, Andrew. Yep. The detailed check report. Oh. Okay. Uh, not on this one, though, the, on the dispersion. It says infrastructure renewal plans. <coughs> okay, right. That's for but, the uh, infrastructure but, renewal plan. Oh. For clarity, though, fellas, we were on the disbursement report and yeah. then the scroll down to the uh, town of the pot check register summary. So at least if we're all looking for something, we could be all be on the same page. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay so the summary one we're all good with? Yep. Yes? Okay. So let's have a look at the detailed. It's um, invoice number T607. Give me one sec. Yeah. Infrastructure, infrastructure renewal plans. Under capital. Yeah. Maybe that's for the road. Mm hmm I don't know. Because I know they were yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm
Look at that, Dylan. It sure takes a long time to come back in. Let's so put in an extra effort to do an extra grade report. I thought he said that we were going to get that this week, actually. Yeah. Salmon from home just to come and uh, yes, go no yeah, overtime. Uh, I jumped to the pump. Yeah. Uh, the last one was for as built uh, towards the as built drawings. It was 4,800, I believe, uh, with 18,000 more to go. 19,000 more to go. What do you mean by the as built? So that's just the finished construction drawings. So where your curb stops are, where your piping is, the depth of pipe, size of pipe, all your uh, the completed construction drawings. And that was for the rose? Yeah. So we still have another billing after this. I believe it's nineteen thousand more is left on the on their uh, contract. This is covered in the budget. The initial. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. No problem, Michael. I had to ask because I didn't know what as built meant. It sounded like one word. As built. What's an as built? It's an as built. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions on the register? Andre? Anybody else you want to call? Yeah. <laughs> <What's up? laughs> I don't like the shit of that rain. <laughs> Damn accountants. Yeah. Okay, so we're good with that? The resolution will be forthcoming. Alrighty. Council indemnity bylaws issue sheet. So what had happened is in 2017 and 18, in accordance with the indemnity bylaw, the council had taken a 10% decrease. So in 2019, they were looking at a yearly increase, which was a norm based on the CPI, um, Consumer Price Index. So this is the year that it's supposed to go back to get in the CPI, and that would be a percentage of 2.70 increase. So in order to put that back on the indemnity, I would require a resolution. Run that by me again? Well, it wouldn't... When they were doing the austerity measures, they cut council's pay, ten yeah. percent. So if we wanted to be covered for uh, inflation CPI, we would have to pass a resolution to give ourselves a raise. Um, my only thoughts would be right now is it might be somewhat premature because we're still we haven't finalized the budgets yet. So in the event that we were going to get this big time increase, uh, I'd like to see it after we do the budgets. Actually, I would like us to just hold uh, hold where we are for this year and see where where we are next year. Okay. I think that uh, that's what would be. I would opinion. just need direction because it's in your bylaw yeah. that you would get it for 2019. So that would just I will do whatever council suggests, but I just need to know because yeah. our bylaw states right now. If we could, let's just let's just hold off until after the budgets are done, okay. and then we'll review it. Review or okay, review of com council committees and boards. Um, this has come up a couple of times as it relates to some members feel that um, maybe it's not adequate for them to be on certain committees, whether it be that they don't meet, whether it be that we're just considered extra bodies. And it was just to bring the discussion back to the table to see where you feel you are with some of these committees. Well, I guess my question would be. Um the committees that haven't we haven't met at all is are they really active and then I guess the question is do we have are we having do we still have all the right people on the right committees? I think we've made some changes lately, uh, just from last week with regards to the C D C which will help. I think the uh, DMC seems to be getting a little bit more active right now, but how long that that uh, you know, where we go with that, but so we get the coalition I don't know what's going on with that. Um, I can tell you, coalition was something that we initiated, and now we've passed it on to OCN, and they're in the process of doing it right now. But I guarantee you're not going to see a meeting until midsummer, if that, because they haven't even really started yeah. up yet. Well, maybe it's just a slow start. I thought it would be a little bit more active. Tesla sure. planning. I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah, we'll be back to an update on that one. Um, 
kind of just waited for that report back, yeah. I yeah. think. But that's that's a big thing. There's not much point in meeting. Like, it's tough to say what, what we can and can't drop. I guess we just, we need to have a discussion on, on you know, there's, if we want to be on all these committees that we're on, you know, like I'm on COPP, is it necessary? I don't know. Uh, you know, Chamber of Commerce, you know, all the, they're all individual discussions, I guess. And is that the route we want to go? Yeah, well, you know, we, as a community agency, we need to be involved with the community. It's unfortunate when some of these groups don't meet very often. Right, and you, mm -hmm. you ask for a committee report at council, and the report is no meeting. You know, so you, you wonder, right, is it a valuable use of our time or not? Uh, that being said, if there's other committees that people have an interest in, I'm sure members of council would be welcome. So if there's something that somebody is interested in pursuing, well, why don't we uh, get it on the table and see if that's where we want to be? Or maybe we look at the end of the year and we, we decide, after we've had a bit of time, to decide whether, because, you know, if, if we sit here for a whole year and we haven't been, we've met yeah. once, then what, what's the point of continuing to be involved in that? And, you know, when we sit there and say, well, hey, give me an update on that. We haven't met, we haven't met, we haven't met. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's truth in that. Yeah. Each November we do go through our committee appointments. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. In saying that, it was probably two years ago that we did go through our listing because we did find that council members were used more as a quorum. So we did get rid of a lot of the committees that council members did sit on. We were basically a quorum and that was it, like to, to enable a group to have a quorum. That was our only involvement in the meeting. So some that weren't maybe necessarily um, of high interest to the town or some of the ones that we pulled off. And Okay. Well, is any, I guess the better question you need to ask is that does anybody feel they're on a committee right now that is they should be removed from the list because either they or uh, like I, I, mean, I can only speak for what I'm on but I know the museum meets regularly and you know we we give them uh, money and it's important to have representative on recycling the same thing that has um, even library. a much bigger financial impact. Is there anyone that people feel that they're... Well, I guess so it was, I mean, maybe it's just a, a false sense of frustration, but, you know, you have, like, for me, an example of the DMC. I mean, like, uh, you know, we meet once every quarter. You know, I, I may, and maybe I'm missing some things because I'm new and I don't know the whole flow of it and I should give it a little bit more time, but, you know, that's where I thought, man, there's not a lot of work to, to be involved in this group here. Um, you know, we talk about Kelsey School Division when we finally got that meeting, but, you know, when we talk about the coalition, well, I've never met with anybody, you know, there's that, that's kind of where I was coming from, is like, is there a thing that really necessary, or is something all of a sudden going to happen, sort of thing. So, I mean, I'm good to, I mean, I brought it forward, I mean, I can wait a year and see how things go, but we're going to review it in November, we'll have a look in November. Because I don't want somebody else uh, on our on our council to just swamp with meetings every single night, and I'm sitting around with, you know, meeting once a quarter with one group. So that's kind of what was my point was that if somebody needs help. Like, no, it's a fair fair point because it's you know, if you don't feel like you have enough to do, there's always more you can jump on. There always is. Fill those where gaps people in space. Yeah, whenever <laughs> people need help. <laughs> Okay, so so we'll we'll monitor it throughout the course of the year. Yep. And we'll put it back on review. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Is there anything in the bylaws about that? I think you guys just have to point. I'm sorry, Karen. What I was, was that? oh sorry, I was asking Trent um in regards to Chamber of Commerce. Oh sorry. If there was a meeting that I couldn't make and if Andre was open that night, if he could attend it for me. Council rep, yeah, why not? We still right. have alternatives. As long as his name's there, okay. we yeah. just asked for that letter of appointment, right? Yeah. So as long as his name's added to it, let's go. Yeah. That's if I want that. That's if I want that carry up. I was talking to everybody else. <laughs> yeah. What are we going to help? Call him a bill that night. Call him a bill. 
Oh, cool. yeah. yeah. We're going through the recycling borders on that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can't make that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I already did the uh, meeting. So we're okay. So we'll, we're going to review it as yeah. the year goes on, and uh, see where we end up. Uh, request form from the CFO to extend the financial plan. I think this is a housekeeping issue. Yeah, and Graham had brought this up the other yeah. night about making sure we have the 40-day notice, so we've moved it, and we're asking for a two-week extension. Yeah. yeah. This is always fun. 4.5, <laughs> tax impact open house meetings. I've done them before. You're going to really enjoy it. They're sad. They're very sad. <laughs> so the assessment branch comes up because they're, they're continually working on the reassessment. So they'll be coming up in July, it looks like. June for us. June, June, June 10th. 10th. June 10th to go over the pending assessment configuration with us. And uh, you all need to attend it. It will be very illuminating. It basically tells you where it's increased, where it's decreased, what we're looking at for assessed values for 2020. And then usually a month later, they'll hold an actual open house for the public and they hold it in our office so that people want to come and talk about their property and their assessments. But this is when it says tax impact, because the assessments show the biggest impact on, on a community for tax-wise. Yes. So it is, a, it is a very good meeting, but it's depressing. Is that like an open meeting, like, or just for a meeting? It just, it's it's a little, it'll be a meeting for council, yeah. oh, okay. right? You'll get the heads up, and then later on they'll have a public meeting with the community. Oh, okay. It gives you a chance to uh, educate yourself. And we get those figures beforehand. Correct? Not always, no. No? Nope. Okay. Yeah. So uh, They come here to discuss them. Do they? Okay, yeah. I thought we had it. I know it's a daytime meeting. and if, The open uh, house? Uh, well, the meeting with council is at 5.15. 5 um, we really, it really is important that we try to attend. Because it, uh, it's important. It's important. It's dry. It's important. Well, it'll explain to you how the tax burden is going to shift. Mm-hmm. Uh, Flint Flint Bombers letter of support. That should be okay. Andre, you had brought this up, and it was just as uh, um, Flint Flint Bombers want to put in a bid to host the National Junior A Championship. Um, this is the formal Royal Bank Cup, and I believe we have a very positive spin off by providing oh, a letter okay. of support for them like accommodations, shopping, meals, like potential games. Yeah. yeah. There's a potential games. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you, yeah. Could, you could do a, it, could be a great. Community event. What year are they looking to host? 2021. 2020. 2020. Because when was the last one? The 2002? Yeah. Right? I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah. Definitely be a good thing for the community. That was awesome the last time it happened. Yeah. So we'll, so we'll drop something yep. up. Uh, okay, the Smart Cities announcement. Uh, so the plan is to have the announcement in May 17th, May, May 14th. 15th, or 14th and 15th in Ottawa. Uh, and they're wondering if somebody from the community would like to go. I heard you were going. Uh, so it's in Ottawa. And I'm not sure who's going from the other two communities. There's one rep from all of the Tri Council. Yeah. And they're going to be doing the announcement on the 14th, and then on the 15th they want to hold people for an extra day if, if they're interested in meeting with the other people that put in their ideas and just uh, kind of network amongst each other. So you're looking at two days, they're paying the expenses through the Smart Cities yeah. funding. The only thing it would cost the town to pause indemnity. Wouldn't we send Chad though if he was the rep? So the, the plan is to send the whole, the whole project oh, okay. team? Um, but it's just it's it's being sent out to open it up to see if there's anybody else from uh, to go. Well, yeah. if there's a second person, I suggest her goes as well. Yeah. I need to let them know. So, so you're for sure going. I am. As part of the project. Slated to go as part of the project too. Yes. Do, do we know if the are going? Don't know yet. I can, can, we, ask. can we find out? I honestly think it would be. A good thing, you know what I mean. Like, there's a there. We have we have a really good chance of winning. Um, so, I'll well, make some contacts either way. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I'll ask if Chief and the River going. Yeah. <coughs> Already. Um. Uh, nothing for personnel. Nothing on the airport. 
New business next meeting. Update on consulting, update on outstanding consultant reports. Update on the planning district. Uh, CDC council board appointments. Mm. Anything else you guys want to the next agenda? I'm trying to find that wording. So the reason I put these as new business next meeting because these were things that I didn't quite get done yeah. that I didn't want to fall off the radar so that you know it's still on. Yeah, good. It's a good way of doing it. Well, for me too. Because mm -hmm. it, it keeps it. Keeps yeah. it yeah. Okay. I think we have a few things for in camera. Yeah, no, where do I find that uh, wording again? Oh, it's if you click on the in camera thing. Oh, yeah, I just did. Um, it might be gone. Uh, it's gone. Yeah. Screen to click. <laughs> Does that remind you of that, eh? Do now move ourselves. That's how we want to close our front doors. That's our work. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's the mayor and his chair. Yeah, I can, I can bring it up here. You don't have it memorized yet, Andre? No, I don't actually. Sorry, guys. I, I got a good memory. It's just, it's crazy short. Go ahead, Karen. I think Trevor knew it better. I think it's, we now move into the in-camera portion of the... Committee of the Holt with Mayor Herb Jakes. Um, resolve that we now move ourselves into the in-camera portion of the Committee of the Holt with Mayor Jakes and the chair to discuss matters requiring our attention.